Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look at a search and rescue rendezvous from March 2019 to quickly explain to you the basics of how you do that again. The question says, whilst on passage, own vessel receives a request to assist in search and rescue operations. When own vessel arrives at the scene, it observes the on-scene coordinator on a bearing due south at a range of 8 miles. The OSC is conducting the search using the parallel track search pattern with another vessel on its port beam at a distance of 3 miles. Both vessels are steering a course of 145, maintaining a speed of 9 knots. Own vessel is instructed by the OSC to take up station at a distance of 3 miles on the OSC starboard beam as soon as possible, with own vessel's maximum speed of 15 knots. So what it wants you to do, find the course own vessel needs to steer to comply with the instructions for 15 marks, find the steaming time required for own vessel to be at the required station for 10 marks, and then find the steaming time required for own vessel to be at the CPA, with the OSC, stating a range of bearing of the OSC from own vessel at that time for another 10 marks. So it starts telling us where we are. When own vessel arrives at the scene, it observes the on-scene coordinator on a radar bearing due south at a range of 8 miles. The way we're going to do these plots, the OSC is always going to be the cross in the middle. Okay, so the OSC, when we arrived on scene, was bearing due south at a range of 8 miles. So what we're going to do is plot our start position. If it's due south of us at 8 miles, we must be due north of it at 8 miles. So we're going to measure that 8 miles, and we're going to plot that on the plotting sheet. And we're going to label that as our start position. So that's where we're starting. Okay. Right, so that's our start position. The OSC is conducting a search using a parallel track search pattern, another vessel on support beam at 3 miles. Both vessels are steering a course of 145. So what we're going to do is label up what their course is. Don't draw the line in, we're just going to draw it up with a little line here to show that was their heading. So, they are heading 145, and they've got everybody else on their port beam at a distance of 3 miles. So they're all going to be along a line like that. So it says 3 miles on the port beam. So we're going to plot 3 miles on its port beam for where that other ship is. Just so we've got a full appraisal of the situation and what's going on. So plot your 3 miles there. On its beam. Obviously, it's heading 145, so its beam is going to be 055. So, plot where that is there. So, that's the other ship. Both are steering the course at a speed of 9 knots. So, write in 9 knots. That way, you're not going to make a mistake and write in the wrong speed or anything like that when you do it. Vessel is instructed by the OSC to take up station a distance of 3 miles on the starboard beam as soon as possible. So we're going to measure with 3 miles. And we're going to label up now our target position, where we want to go to. So a T is going to be the target position, around there. And then 235 is obviously going to be the beam bearing of the other ones. Just quickly knock that in. So that's where we want to go to. So that's going to be our target position okay now what we do everything is now going to be relative to the osc in the middle always so the osc was heading 145 at nine knots that means if we want to stay on its beam our position is going to also have to be moved 145 at nine knots so what we do is measure with nine knots plot that in there like so and then parallel that course down. Once you start paralleling your courses, make sure to use your triangles properly with the line in them. Get it nice and accurate, or as accurate as you can, for the size of the plotting sheet. Try and minimise your errors. So, I'm going to move that part down to there. That there is going to be a one hour run of the other vessel. We're going to make a one hour vector triangle. So that's going to be the point of rendezvous. Oh. 
what we're going to do is say, well, okay, that's where that ship's going. Where do we want to go? Well, we want to go from the start position to position T, don't we? Because that's where we need to end up. So relatively, that there is going to be the line we want to move down. Okay. So we're going to start at T and we're going to physically move down here to there. But we're not going to be heading that way. What we're saying is, in one hour we're going to be there. An hour ago we were there. So we need to find where O crosses the line. What you do for that is just strike back your own ship's speed. In this case it was 15 knots. So we'll measure 15 knots. Whenever you go beyond the scale, extend it. So you don't miscalculate. People always do. Measure your 15 knots from your scale. If you change the scale to do 6 miles again, always remember to change it, otherwise you might make a mistake. Put the pin of your compass in point R, just like we did with the least time rendezvous, strike across to get O. So that there is going to be point O. So what we're seeing, we're making a one hour vector triangle, and from O to R is going to be our course to steer to rendezvous. So what we're going to do is parallel that back through the centre there. I've got one six seven roughly. So that's my heading. What I'm saying now is this is an hour. So we're there. That's where the USC is position is relative to us, the target. If we're going to be there in an hour, we must have been that far apart an hour beforehand. And extend both up two hours beforehand and so on. Now everything is relative to the OSC in the middle. So that's going to be our heading of 167. Congratulations, you've just got 15 marks. Find the steaming time required for own vessel to be at the required station. Steaming time is quite simple. The formula is simply how far you had to go, start to T, divided by the hourly speed you were making. Well, your relative closing speed is going to be from O to T. So start the T divided by O to T. Speed equals distance over time. We've got a distance. We've got a speed. That gives us time. So start the T. We measure that. Find out how far we had to go at the beginning. Be much more accurate with dividers, but I don't have any handy at the minute. Well, I've just been asked quickly to do this by somebody for the SQAs. So, I got start to T was 10.2 miles. O to T was 7.5 miles. So, what we're going to do on our calculator is do three bit of blue tack. 10.2 divided by 7.5, 1.36 hours, which is going to be 1 hour and 22 minutes. So, the steaming time is going to be 1 hour and 22 minutes. Okay, That's because that's how far we go in an hour, and that's how far we needed to go overall. So it makes sense, if O is inside the start the T position, that we've got more than an hour to go because we've got to run that bit and that's an hour so it's going to be an hour and a bit if O was on this side out here to this side of start it would mean that it's going to take less than an hour so find the steaming time required for own vessel to be at the required station 1 hour 22 minutes there's another 10 marks the next bit's the one where we're going to start looking at slightly more tricky plots find the steaming time Required for own vessel to be at the closest point of approach with the OSC, stating the range and bearing of the OSC from own vessel at that time. So, they ask a few different questions. Essentially, though, you're going to move along this line relative to the OSC. So, whenever you are at right angles to that point, is going to be your point of CPA. So, it's going to be about here. Do it with a set square, or the other way of doing it is just use good old-fashioned compass and find the arc of tangency with the line. Just keep moving your compass until you get there. 
it's not quite as quick or accurate but there we go and then where the tangent is that's your point of CPA there so find the steaming time required for own vessel to be at the closest point of approach with the USC to get the time distance divided by speed this time we're going to do start to CPA divided by O to T. O to T hasn't changed. O to T is still going to be 7.5 because that's our relative closing speed. So it's going to be something over 7.5. So what start the CPA going to be? I get 7.6. So 7.6 divided by 7.5 gives us 1.01, .01, which is one hour and one minute. So, the steaming time required for the own vessel to be at CPA is one hour and one minute. Happy days. Stating the range and bearing of the OSC from own vessel at that time. Well, range, quite simply, we measure the range like so. Take it off. What is it? I get a CPA of 2 miles, possibly 1.9. Yours will be a bit more accurate. I'm doing mine in ballpoint pen in a hurry. So, CPA was going to be 2 miles. State the bearing of the OSC from own vessel. Well, you are at the CPA point you're there the bearing of the OSC from you is going to be through it that way so it is going to be bearing from you 108 now another question they may ask that's the answer to this question there's your 10 marks they might ask relative bearing okay that's the true bearing of it. Relative bearing is from your ship's head. Now your ship is actually heading this way, but it's going to crab along that relative line like that to get there. So you're actually pointing this way, not that way along your relative line. You are pointing your heading. Relative bearings are clockwise from the ship's head. So in this case, the ship's head was 167 degrees. So if something is heading 167 and something else is bearing 108 true obviously that's 59 degrees to port however relative bearings are clockwise from the ship's head so it's heading 167 so it's not port 59 it's 301 degrees around if you get stuck use your fingers 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 1 and so on count all the way around and eventually you'll get to 300 and one. Right, so that would be how you'd get the relative bearing. Because everything's relative to the cross in the middle, other things they might ask, they may say, aha, what about the point you pass astern of it? Well, if it's heading 145 at 9 knots, passing astern of it, you will be directly astern of it there, just carrying the 145 straight through. Calculating the time to get a stern of it, that's just simply going to be start to a stern. So you'd do start to a stern divided by O to T. So what was the distance start to a stern of it? No idea. Let's have a quick look. Scooby -dooby 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 -dooby. 6.2 roughly. So 6.2 divided by 7.5. In hours 49 50 minutes, and your relative bearing would be again taken in exactly the same way. Now, obviously, the true bearing of it is going to be what the ship's head was the 145. The relative bearing, you're still heading 167, its true bearing is now 145. You are not 10 22 degrees to port, you are 360 minus that which is going to be 338. Again, count them. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Count it all the way around if you want. 5, 6, 7, 8. 338. 
Okay. If it asks you the relative bearing for that when you're astern. Other things they could ask you. They they could ask you something simple like, you know, at what distance does it cross your bow? In which case you are heading the 167. So if you're heading 167, it's going to cross your bow when you are at that point there. Obviously it's relative bearing when it crosses your bow is going to be your heading because it's on your bow. And it's true bearing is going to be your heading because it's on your bow. Start to the bow cross divided by O to T again. The formula is always start to the point we're looking for divided by O to T. Okay. They might say to you visibility is 5 miles. So calculate the time you would sight them or the bearing or relative bearing again. All you would do, measure your 5 miles. And then if you drew a ring around the centre point. If the visibility is 5 miles, that OSC can see everything inside that circle, but nothing outside of it. Therefore, anybody inside that circle can see the OSC. Anybody outside of it can't. So the point you would sight the OSC would be where that circle crosses the relative approach line. Not where it crosses the heading line, where it crosses the relative approach line. So let's say visibility was 3 miles. I would draw a 3 mile circle around it instead. Straight around it like that. Hey, look, your position's lined up correctly. Lovely. Now, that point there, where it crosses, here, is where I would first sight the OSC. And obviously I would see it all the way up until I took my station at three miles. They could say, from what time would you sight this vessel? Again, all you would do would be draw the bigger circle, or whatever size circle it was, around that one, and then where the arc crosses, that would be the point you would sight it. Okay. And again, from that point, they could ask you relative bearing, true bearing, or distance would be given in the question, so that wouldn't be really asked. But what time would you get there, or something like that. Other than that, there's not really much they can ask you in search and rescue. If you always base it around the cross in the middle being the OSC, you will always be all right.